The music and responses for today's Mass can be found on pages two and three of our parish bulletin, which can be found at the entrances. Hymn numbers can be also be found on our hymn boards located on the left and right hand sides of the church. W stands for worship aid. All other hymns can be found in the gather hymnal. More information about the many programs and activities taking place here can be found in our parish bulletin or on the parish website. Please remain seated about, the, sorry, please remain seated and open the worship aid to the first page. And together let us pray the prayer for vocations. Heavenly Father, bless your church with an abundance of holy, zealous priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters. Give those you have called to the married state and those you have chosen to live as single persons in the world, the special graces that their lives require. Form us all in the likeness of your Son, so that in him, with him, and through him, we may love you more deeply and serve you more faithfully, always and everywhere. With Mary, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, before Mass begins, please stand and take a moment to greet those around you. The presider for today's Mass is Father Bennett Tron. Please remain standing and join with us in singing our, for our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, number 520, verses 1 and 2. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, we gather around this altar to offer a fitting sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God. So that we might do this well, let us now pause to call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's loving mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile the nations to the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to bring salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Coeleth. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill. And yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn man back to dust, and say, return, O children of men, to your eyes a thousand years 
are like yesterday, come and gone. Oh, like a watch in the night. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Sweep them away like a dream, like grass which is fresh in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and is fresh, by evening it withers and fades. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Then teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long show pity to your servants. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exalt and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. Oh, give success to the work of our hands. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you're raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For if you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and had put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord.
blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He said to himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. He said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. Then I shall store all my grains and other goods and I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years, rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, for whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich, in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Some numbers for you to keep track of this evening. 200 million, 48,500, and 36 billion. We'll get to those numbers shortly. The first reading today we have from the book of Ecclesiastes. This is the only time we ever, ever hear from that book on a Sunday or a high feast day. So I think it's important to give a little context in that book. The consensus among the scripture scholars is that it was probably a work of King Solomon, the son of King David, towards the end of his life, when he had rejected everything, right? As Solomon, as we know, was given the tremendous gift of wisdom that he had asked for from God. Well, this is Solomon in the latter part of his life, when he had rejected everything, when he had violated the law of the Lord, namely Deuteronomy 17, when the Lord enunciated that when you are to have a king, that your king shall not do several things. They shall not acquire great wealth for themselves. They will not acquire more than one wife. And they shall not acquire weaponry for warfare. Well, the scripture testimony tells us that Solomon violated all of those things. He acquired hundreds of wives and he amassed himself a great army. And the testimony of the scripture tells us that each year he collected taxes that were some 666 talons of gold. A talon of gold is equivalent to a year's salary. And in the scripture, it tells us that he built buildings and barns to keep his possession. But he gave us that insight that we hear in the reading, the first reading today. Vanities of vanities. In other translation, nothing and nothing. All is nothing. Indeed, that's the insight that we're given, that all is nothing when we are separated 
from God's words and from God's will and from a relationship with God. That when we're separated from the divine one, that our priorities are completely messed up. And so with that in mind, and those people whom Jesus addressed in the gospel today knows exactly the situation that was described in Ecclesiastes and in, in Solomon's writing. And so Jesus is standing there and a rich young man comes to him and complains, tell my brother to give me what belongs to me. See, there's a dispute among the sons here. Probably the father has died. And someone's not getting their fair share. Right? The, the Mosaic law tells them that the firstborn son should get a two-third, a two-third portion of the father's wealth because he is now in charge of the family and the other son should get the other third, or if there are many brothers who has to share that estate, that the oldest one gets a double portion of all the other ones. And so that's what's at stake, to which Jesus tells that parable. Now, a couple things that we want to be very clear about. Jesus is not condemning wealth for wealth's sake. Right? That he's not, because unless, unless the world produces wealth, it's very difficult to lift people out of poverty. Unless an economy is productive, it's very difficult to raise the standard of living. And so that's not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus condemns is our attachment to possession. If our life, if all of our life we are working towards acquiring more and more possession, that has the power to detach us, to remove us from God and from the gospel. And as I look around as a society, I'm alarmed. I'm alarmed by the numbers. Did you know that last year, Apple sold more than 200 million iPhones? We see how many Starbucks and, and McDonald's there are in this community and when, wherever we travel, right? In fact, in some large cities like Chicago, you'll see a Starbucks on all four corners. They're ubiquitous. But if you add all the McDonald's outlet and all the Starbucks outlet together, it is equal to less than half of the 48,500 storage unit facilities that we as a nation make use of. Last year, that industry accounted for $36 billion in spending. Now, to give you a perspective of what that means, right? We, as a nation, spent about $15 billion on music. And music is everywhere in our society, right? Yes. But it pales to comparison when we spend $36 billion to store our stuff. We spent all of that because the houses that we built just aren't quite big enough. Two years ago, we, we passed the threshold that the average American home is now 2,600 square feet. Compare that to 30 years ago when it was 1,600 square feet when we have much larger families. I give you all these numbers because they are telltale sign of where we are as a people and where we are as a society. That we have divorced ourselves from what is the good, the truth, and the beautiful. We have divorced ourselves from God. So 
Jesus then tells us to cultivate what is important to God. So what is important to God? Well, we're now in the 12th chapter of Luke's Gospel account, and in the last few weeks, we have heard what is important to God. To love our neighbor, to love God, to seek after peace, to leave all that stuff behind, to follow in an unreserved way when we find the will of God in our life. And then last week, to pray. Those are the things that are important to God. Cardinal George, the late Archbishop of Chicago, remind his faithful ones that what is important to God and the only thing that we take with us when we leave this life, as we enter into the next, the only thing we take with us is our ability to love and the fruits of our love. My friends, that's what the gospel confronts us with today. Who and what are we loving? Who and what are we spending our times and effort and energy to chase after? Right? Because unless we get our priorities straight, unless we get our priorities correct, unless we do that, then we're chasing after the wrong thing. Because sooner or later, wealth, power, prestige, fame, good looks, all of that will fade away. And the only thing, the only thing that we take with us is our ability to love and to sacrifice. Please stand with me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not me, consubstance with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. Our faith was crucified and Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again in glory to judge him and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, who is glorified the Lord, who has spoken to the cross. I believe in one of the Holy Catholic and the Son of Church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection. Trusting in our Heavenly Father and in the riches of His grace, we now make known our petitions. That fervent devotion to the Eucharist will cause the Church to grow in numbers and holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, that they would work together to promote peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to a consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husbands and wives, that they daily commit to the sacrament of marriage and by their example and encouragement be a model of God's love and service to their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our priests, that they may continue to be on fire for souls and serve Christ and his flock, we pray to the Lord. Lord, that our parish community may advance in faith, hope, and love. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our deceased relatives and friends, may they be welcomed into the arms of Christ and his blessed mother. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, help us to put away the old self and be renewed in the spirit, recreated in righteousness and holiness of truth through Christ our Lord. bought and sold. Some will choose to gather it, all that they can hoard. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Pleasure is a siren promising the flesh. Grief and leave from emptiness, a hiding place from death. Some will choose to chase it, until it leaves them born. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Power is a hunger burning in the breast to walk among the mighty and trample on the rest. Some will choose to gain it by lie or guile or sword, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. Accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercy and faithful God, for you've given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always shows compassion for children and for the poor, the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for all of your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory and without end, we acclaim. Oh, 
holy and to be glorified, O Lord. You love the human race, and you who always walk with us on the journey of life, bless indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when we as once for the disciples and now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By, your, by our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit, grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard, our bishop, with all the other bishops, with priests and deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the time by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them to the good news of salvation, and go forward with them along the way to your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead, whose faith alone you know, admit them to rejoice at the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Paul, Saint Stephen, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Seek the things that last. 
come and learn from me. Where your treasure is, your heart shall be. Look at the ravens high above you. They do not work their whole life through. And yet God feeds them and protects them. So how much more will God protect and care for you? Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things that last, come and learn from me. Where your treasure is, your heart shall be. Behold the lilies in their splendor. In grace and beauty are they dressed. And yet so soon their bloom is faded. So how much more will those who look to God be blessed? Where, where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things that last. Come and learn from me. Where your treasure is, your heart shall be. Do not feel it all flawed. Lord delights to give you the blessed reign of God. Give your possessions to the needy. Gain a treasure that will not fade. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things that last. Come and learn from me. Where your treasure is, your heart shall be.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those renewed in these heavenly gifts and in your never-failing care for them. Make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Minnesota Twins Family Night at Target Field is coming up. It's an attempt to um, build community, to unify our parish. Sponsored by the Knights of Columbus, um, they are hosting our annual family night at Target Field. Uh, please join me and um, the other priests on Tuesday, August 20th, to cheer on the soon-to-be world champion Minnesota Twins. <laughs> Am I being too optimistic? Hope springs eternal, right? Come cheer us on to beat up the Chicago White Sox. More information and the order form for this event is in the gathering space after Mass today, and so please stop by for that. The sign-up deadline is, is August 12th. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to seek love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Say they shall be satisfied.